part of P2 has properties of radicals, and the third part of P2 that we're going to talk about on Monday is simplifying or rational exponents. Those are like with fractional exponents, so we're going to go into that on Monday. Properties of radicals. If I have the nth root of a to the m, what does that this again? transfer yes. to? Mm -hmm. Yes, but we're on this again, Cameron. Ah. It's the nth root of a to the m. How can I rewrite that? Well, okay, stop. I know what you're thinking. I don't want to change it into fractions right now. I want to kind of break it down so that I can simplify it and solve it. Okay? So, technically, Jeremiah's right. I could turn it into a fractional exponent, but that doesn't get me anywhere sometimes. So, what I can do is I can break this down and I can take the nth root of a and then raise it to the m power. Okay? Because if I can take the whatever root of that base is, then I can cube it or square it or whatever, okay? An example of that would be if I have the third root of eight squared, okay? I'm gonna rewrite that as the cube root of eight, and then I'm gonna square it. What is the cube root of eight? Two. And what is two squared? Four. And that's how I would get my answer there. Does that make sense? Okay, so we want to break it down so that we can simplify it and possibly even solve for it. Okay. Oh, gosh, there's so much work right now. Okay, how would I do the nth root of A times the nth root of B? What's another way I could write that? Yeah, I can combine them. So I can say, let's just take the nth root of A times B. Okay. So let's say I have the square root of 5 times the square root of 7. Since neither of those have a square root, it might be better if I just combine them and simplify from there if I can. Um, so then I have this. What is 5 times 7? 35. So is 35 or does 35 have a square root? Not a nope. So I can just leave it like that for now. Or I could simplify it a little bit more. What goes in? Well, nope, I can't because 35 is just. Five and seven. Mm. What happens if I have a fractional form? The nth root of a over the nth root of b. How can I rewrite that? Combine them again like this. If I take and divide them out first, then take the, the root of that. I can solve that way. And what can B never be in this case? Zero. Zero. Okay. Just know that rule. So let's say I have the fourth root of 27. Does 27 have a fourth root? No. Over the fourth root of 9. Do either of those have fourth roots? Three. Mm -hmm. That's not a fourth root. That would be a... Well, I know what you're saying right now, but no, that's not what... So we're going to take it and we're going to combine it to say the fourth root of 27 divided by 9. What's 27 divided by 9? 3. And now that leaves me with a fourth root of 3. Does 3 have a fourth root? No, ma'am. Nope. So that's my answer. Okay. So on your homework, I should not see decimal answers. Fourth root means that I can take four of the same number out of there. So on your homework, if I see decimals, that means you just plugged it in your calculator and you did not do this by hand. Okay. What happens if I'm taking the mth root, m, m root of the nth root of a? So the nth root squared. Nope. So I have m of n of a, basically. Okay. What I can do is I can take these two roots and I can multiply them together on the outside and take that root of A. So I can take M and N, multiply them together and find that root of A. Um, an example would be this. What is this telling me here? What am I asking you to do? The third root of radical. OK. 
okay? What, what number always goes with radicals with a radical like that when it's not a number in front of it? Two, it's always taking the square or something. You have to remember that. This is always the square. You're not gonna see a two there. So when that happens, that means I now have three times two out here, yes? Mm -hmm. Which gives me the sixth root of 10, okay? Do not forget that that is a square. That's where we'll get caught up. What time? How do you put the six in the calculator? How do you put the sixth root of something yeah. in the calculator? On your graphing calculator, you are going to press, let me think about this real quick. Um, yes, okay. On your graphing calculator, you're gonna press the number six. Press the button that says math, okay? When you press it, the button that says math, it ha gives you a scroll list of things. The cube root is the one that has the three in front of it. The one with the X is the one that we're going to press and it automatically then puts the six root there and you can plug it in your calculator and do. So you can do any number from there. Also, when you press that math button, if you notice the first two things, one says an arrow to a fraction, one says an arrow to a decimal. So if you have a decimal, you can change it to a fraction by pressing that button. If you have a decimal, you can change it to a fraction by pressing that button, okay? And you can just scroll down and press enter on all, any of those and those things will happen. If you scroll over from where math is when it's highlighted, okay, then you have number stuff. Do you see ABS right there yeah. under number? That stands for absolute value. That will give you the absolute value bars so that you can plug things in, okay? Um, I see why it's not. We'll talk about all the other stuff, possibly later. But if you go all the way to PRB, you should be used to that PRB because we did that last year. What's PRB stand for? Anybody remember? Probability. probability. And it has all your probability things there, plus some more that we haven't discussed yet. I can take a picture of what's on the board. You can take a picture of anything, yes. Uh, but I have two more to go. You want me to wait until I finish the other two, Tyler? Okay. Um, how do I do this one? The nth root of a to the n power. The nth root of a to the n power. What happens when the root that I'm taking? Oh, they cancel out. They cancel out, and they give you a. Okay. So hopefully you have a lot. So if I have something that looks like this, remember that this is a two. So this actually just becomes. Because they cancel. Okay? Nine. Now, the sixth rule for properties of radicals, whoops. Um, one is for even and one is for odd. And when it says even and when it says odd, that means the power is even or odd. That's what we're looking at. Not the number inside, the literal root or power that we're taking. Okay? For even, if you have the nth root of a to the n on the inside like this, okay? then that means that you're getting the absolute value of A. So you just take whatever that number is on the inside and you take the absolute value of it, okay? So if I have the square root of negative 12 squared, I'm going to get 12 as my answer, okay? These are ones where you just look at it, you don't really change anything, you just have to know. If it is an odd power, an odd number where the N is, Okay, then this comes out to simply equal A. Meaning, if I have the cube root of negative 12 cubed, then I'm going to get negative 12. Remember when we take um, even x, when, when we take even powers and take a radical using the even power, you have to have an even answer, okay? And when we take odds, we can, we can have, um, I mean, you have to have a positive answer. When we take odds, we can have negative answers. Because remember, if you do like negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, you're going to get an odd answer, yes? But if I do negative 3 times negative 3, I get a positive. So anytime it's an even power, even radical, I'm getting a positive out. Anytime it's an odd radical, I'm getting an odd out. With that being said, um, I have decided to do something a little different today. Yeah.